Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Feng Wang again. This would be the final lecture. This is the third part of my review about a carbonyl compound. So I put all the chapters about a carbonyl compound all together. I review them together. So carbonyl compound, again the structure. This carbon is a sp2 hybridized carbon. It's a triangular planar. This carbon bears a positive charge. This is very critical for all the reactions of a carbonyl compound. So for aldehyde or ketones, so we have only nucleophilic addition reaction. So which means the R prime either hydrogen for aldehyde or R group for alkyl groups, they are not, they are not living groups. You can just do the addition uh, reactions if you have a nucleophile. For uh, acid to derivative strength, I call them a kalinia, kalinia. This is the term I created. Z for uh, acid derivatives, so they have a different uh, reactivity. Basically, this gives you the order of the reactivities. In this case, uh, many reactions, actually, the Z serves as the leaving groups. Uh, I personally really don't like this slide. This is about a reduction of uh, different uh, 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 carbonyl molecules. So, because in my view, I only want you to to understand. You know, this are very good uh, reducing region. Hydrogen is good reducing region that can reduce carbonyl compound. But uh, different to reducing agent, they have a, the reducing capability. They are different. So the substrate is different. You may have a different, you know, redu reduced product. Well, in my view, you know, you only need to know the mask mechanism, you know, they can be reduced. But unfortunately, many professors that the con the sims don't agree with you because they always like to put a you know a very unique a very spe specific reaction like use this reducing region to reduce this molecules you are going to have an aldehyde so well uh again i don't like it does not mean you know it will not be in the exam i uh, but it's hard for me all to see. Oh, okay, just remember everything here. No, I hate to do that. So my expectation to you, you know, uh, my my goal here, I share with you the mechanism. I help you understanding the organic chemistry. But uh, this really depends on you uh, to to remember uh, the specific reactions. So. Uh, do as much as you can for this table. Uh, that's what that's that's all I can say. Uh, carbonyl compound again the structure uh, the size of the reaction that they have. This carbon bears a positive charge. If we have a nucleophile, nucleophile basically is a molecule which have extra electron that can share with uh, this carbon. So we learned very, very super reactive lithium region, very reactive magnesium region, and another very reactive acetylamide anion. This is also a organometallic compound. They normally re react with the carbonyl carbon here. So the very reactive uh, Magnesium region, a uh, green yard, or a uh, lithium region, even more reactive. They react with the uh, acid derivatives uh, like uh, acid chloride or esters. They require two molars. The final product is uh, tertiary alcohol. So the less reactive uh, cuprate region, the copper region, uh, they don't react with the uh, acid chloride or uh, they react with acid chloride, but they react a different way. Uh, 
So they only react with the acid chloride. They don't react with the esters because you know the reactivity of the cupric region uh, is uh, very limited. So the the way they do the reaction also the different. So this is the reaction. They just they just replace the, the very good living group right here, chloride, to form the ketone molecules. We learned one, two addition reactions and one, four addition reaction for a special uh, carbonyl compound. Is uh, this is a car this is alpha beta unsaturated. This is a carbonyl ketone. The alpha beta position the is a there is pi bond. This is basically is conjugated system. So when we have a very strong, very reactive um, organometallic reagent, it's going to prefer again prefer reactor here to do the one two re, re addition reaction. If we have a less reactive uh, 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 cuprate reagent, the product basically is uh, one four product. Why? This is seems like a three four addition product. But we normally call this is the 1,4 addition product. I explained to you during my regular lectures. The second very important reaction is actually from the alpha hydrogen here. Alpha hydrogen, this is a, because it's the position at the alpha position of a carbonyl group. This is like a alkene hydrogen, terminal alkene hydrogen, some acidity here. So if we have a very strong base, we can do a base acid reaction to form a, to depronate this protein and it forms a very good nucleophile. Again, these two bases, LDA, very popular, tertiary butoxide, they are very strong bases, but they are very strong, they are very weak nucleophile. So they don't react with this carbonyl carbon, but because of a the bulky, the size of uh, these two bases, uh, of these two nucleophile, they prefer react with the hydrogen, or they prefer serve the uh, strong base to react with the acid to form a carbon cation here. And the form, whenever the carbon cation formed here, it's very strong, very good uh, nucleophile. So another option is the, you know, the Hydroxide or oxalate, methoxide or alkoxide, methoxide or ethoxide, you know, the size uh, of them are not very big because this is a this is a reactive point. So you, we have a just have a simple simple chain here or just simple hydroxide here. This molecules. They are very strong bases. They can be a strong bases. They can be a very strong nucleophile too. So whenever when we see this type of uh, molecules, we normally consider uh, they are strong bases for carbonyl compound. They normally depronate the alpha hydrogen to form an enolate, and uh, enolate the carbon carbon anion. Or oxygen anion here. They are the carbon, particularly for this carbon anion, it is very strong nucleophile, and we can do a lot of reaction actually from this strong nucleophile. This is one of the alpha carbons reaction. This is uh, actually can be system reactions. Uh, we learned in chapter, I believe in chapter 22. This is the uh, intramolecular uh, condensation reaction. So I hope you know the full mechanism of this reaction. But uh, if you want to have a quick, uh, quick response to uh, exam questions, then you know whenever you see a base, see this is a base. The figure out the where is the, the alpha position, you see this is alpha, this is alpha, this is alpha, this is alpha position. This is ketone, the carbonyl, this is ketone. So think about an alpha, alpha hydrogen and a ketone molecules to form a water, that's a condensation reaction. So basically two alpha hydrogen plus one oxygen from the carbonyl groups to form a new molecules. 
the new molecule still has uh, carbonyl groups plus the alpha, beta, etc. alpha, beta, pi bond. So this is the odor reaction. This is the condensation reactions, um, glazing reactions, the condensation reactions of uh, esters, a similar mechanism, just uh, but the, the a small molecule, in this case water, is a small molecule so formed and eliminated. But for glazing reaction, is a uh, alcohol molecules. So again, focus on alpha position and a keto molecule. This is alpha position. One of the asterisks provide this part. This is alpha position, alpha hydrogen. One alpha hydrogen. And another keto molecule provide the alkoxide, alkyl plus oxygen part. So we form an alcohol molecule. And a new bond, a new sigma bond between the alpha, alpha, alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon uh, from another ester molecule. Again, this is a condensation reaction. I hope you know the full mechanism. But I'll also share you the secret here to quickly know what the final product are. Uh, this is actually a, another reaction we learned in OCHEM 1. It's basically so we call a malonic ester synthesis. So this is also a very, very important reaction. So I remember we had a hard time in OCHEM 1 for, from this reaction, but I hope that right now it's much easier to you because we learned so many reactions from the alpha, alpha carbon. Whenever you have alpha of carbon here, you have a base. It's very easily to form a carbon anion, which is a very strong nuclear foil to attack this carbonyl, to, to, to attack this carbon, this alkyl halide. And uh, to do one more step, react, we can, we, because there is still uh, one more alpha hydrogen here, we can do one more step to form uh, uh, new molecules. You see, this is from the second step. This is the, from the first step. Basically, two alpha hydrogen are replaced by the two alkyl halide. So the next step is the hydrolysis of the esters from diacid and do another decarboxylic reaction to form. Uh, this is the final product. So this is a, called a repeated malonic ester synthesis. All right, so then we learned the two um, coupling reactions. The first one is the, the coupling reaction of alkyl halide with the cupric region. Basically, is the, the the organic part of the cupric region uh, linked with the alkyl part of alkyl halide. This is uh, one of the coupling reactions we learned from um, in chapter 24. Uh, the second reaction, I consider the second reaction, is one of the top five organic reactions. So they, we call them uh, Suzuki reactions. Basically, Suzuki reactions is uh, the uh, halide, organic halide react with the boron compound. So the organic part, organic part of the boron um, compound linked with the organic halide part to form either uh, Z, some, if, if we have uh, two options, EZ, uh, well, the EZ will remain from the reactant C. This part is Z in the final product is still Z. The boron compound is the E in the final part. This boron part is still uh, the E configuration remains. This is another uh, Suzuki coupling reaction. Boron acid, this is boron like a boron, e boron ether. This is boron acid react with the organo halide molecules, just a 
but you basically the mechanism is very complicated. I know you all need to know, but um, your mission here is just the length, the organo part of the two molecules to, to form the final Suzuki coupling reaction. Chapter 26 is carbohydrate. Um, I didn't share much with you about a carbohydrate. The only thing I share with you was the Fisher projection formula. We basically draw the, this is the way how we draw uh, carbohydrate molecules. So one word I shared with you is hug. You will think about how whenever you see a Fisher projection formula like this, think about hug. Then you know the relative positions of a vertical bond or horizontal bond. And uh, I also share with you how we decide the R or S character of each stero stereogenic centers in carbohydrate. So I think if you are patient enough, uh, this should be very simple for you to decide the stereogenic centers of property. All right, that's all I want to share with you uh, for organic chemistry too. Uh, good luck.